Welcome back, all you movie aficionados, to another episode of Real Real Talk. Today, we're diving headfirst into the final installment of our series, Movies from the 80s That We Loved. Probably couldn't be done today. And what better way to wrap it up than with a discussion about the controversial film, Soul Man. So get ready for a roller coaster of opinions, insight, and a healthy dose of critical analysis. We're about to peel back the layers of this 80s gem, I guess, and examine why it's a prime example of a film that's better left in the past. So grab your popcorn, settle in, and let's dissect Soul Man like never before. Don't touch that dial, because real talk starts now. In the film Soul Man, we follow the misadventures of Mark Watson, a white college student played by C. Thomas Howell, who dons blackface to secure a scholarship meant for African American students. Mark's intention is to use the scholarship money to attend Harvard Law School, but his actions lead to a series of cringeworthy and problematic situations. The plot kicks off with Mark's desire to impress his crush Sarah by attending the same prestigious law school as her. When his father refuses to fund his his education, Mark resorts to drastic measures and decides to pose as an African-American to qualify for a scholarship intended for minority students. With the help of tanning pills and a perm, Mark transforms his appearance and successfully gains admission to Harvard Law School. However, his deception quickly spirals out of control as he struggles to maintain his charade while facing scrutiny from both his peers and the faculty. As the film progresses, Mark begins to confront the consequences of his actions and grapples with the implications of cultural appropriation and racial insensitivity. Along the way, he forms unlikely friendships and learns valuable lessons about privilege, empathy, and the complexities of racial identity. The plot culminates in a courtroom showdown where Mark must confront his own prejudice and take responsibility for his behavior. In the end, Soul Man serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of ignorance and the importance of confronting systemic racism in all its forms. When we come back, we'll start off with our typical soundtrack discussion. The soundtrack of Soul Man is a mix of upbeat tracks and soulful tunes that attempt to capture the essence of the 80s However, despite its efforts, the soundtrack falls short of leaving any lasting impression. One notable aspect of the soundtrack is its reliance on popular music trends of the time. With tracks featuring prominent artists, the soundtrack aims to evoke a sense of nostalgia and familiarity. Songs from the area, such as pop hits and R&B classics, are scattered throughout the film to set the mood and enhance certain scenes. However, while the soundtrack may have been relevant during the film's release, it fails to stand the test of time. Many of the tracks feel dated and lack the timeless appeal that defines iconic movie soundtracks. As also, the music often feels disconnected from this film's narrative, serving more as background noise than a meaningful complement to the story. The soundtrack's attempt to capture the essence of African American culture through music is overshadowed by the film's problematic premise and portrayal of race. The use of predominantly white artists to soundtrack a film centered around black identity further highlights the film's misguided approach to its racial themes. While the soundtrack of the film may have resonated in its time, it fails to leave any lasting impact or enhance any viewing experience for a contemporary audience. Its its reliance on outdated musical trends and lack of any cohesion with the film's themes contribute to an overall forgettable nature. Now when we get back, we will try to talk about some of the themes that were brought up in this film. The thematic elements in Soul Man attempt to address important social issues such as race, privilege, and identity, but ultimately fall short due to their problematic portrayal and lack of any depth. One of the central themes of the film is racial identity and cultural appropriation. The protagonist, Mark Watson, dons blackface to pose as an African American in order to secure a scholarship intended for minority students. 
This premise is deeply offensive and perpetuates harmful stereotypes, undermining any genuine exploration of racial identity. The film also fails to confront the complexities of race and privilege in American society. Instead of delving into the systematic barriers faced by minorities, Soul Man reduces racial identity to a superficial disguise, trivializing the struggles of marginalized communities. The theme of privilege also emerges through Mark's character, who comes from a privileged background and is oblivious to the realities of the systemic racism around him. His misguided attempt to empathize with African Americans by adopting blackface reflects a naive and ignorant understanding of racial dynamics, highlighting the film's lack of nuance in addressing privilege. Additionally, the film touches on themes of personal growth and self-discovery, Throughout the story, Mark undergoes a transformation as he navigates the challenges of living as a black man in America. However, this character arc is overshadowed by the offensive premise of the film, making it difficult for audiences to empathize with Mark's journey. Ultimately, the thematic elements of Soul Man are undermined by its insensitive portrayal of race and identity. Instead of fostering meaningful discussions about social issues, the film always just perpetuates harmful stereotypes and trivializes the struggles of marginalized communities. As a result, its thematic exploration lacks any depth and fails to resonate with an audience on any meaningful level. Now when we get back, we'll take a look at the cast and crew who were responsible for this film. So let's dive into the cast and crew. First, the lead role of Mark Watson was portrayed by C. Thomas Howell. While Howell delivered a committed performance, his portrayal of a white student masquerading as an African American in blackface was widely criticized for its insensitivity and perpetuation of racial stereotypes. Despite his efforts, the role remains a stain on his career. Ray Don Chong, known for her roles in other 80s films like Commando, played the love interest. Sarah Walker. Chong's performance added some depth to the film, but her character's relationship with Mark was overshadowed by the film's problematic premise. Somehow, James Earl Jones shows up as a distinguished act. The distinguished actor appears as Professor Banks, Mark's mentor. Jones does bring gravitas to the role, but even his presence couldn't salvage the film's misguided approach to race. The supporting cast included talented actors like Leslie Nielsen, who plays Mark's father, Julia Louis-Dreyfus as one of his classmates. Despite all their efforts, their performance couldn't overcome the film's inherent flaws. And then behind the camera, director Steve Miner and writer Carol Black attempt to tackle sensitive social issues, but ultimately failed to do it so effectively. Their decision to greenlight a film centered around blackface reflects a lack of understanding of the racial dynamics at play, and their efforts to address racism fell short of meaningful engagement. The production team also faced criticism for their handling of the film's subject matter, while they may have intent intended to spark conversations about race and privilege, their execution was deeply flawed, resulting in a film that is now remembered more for its controversy than its content. Soul Man boasted a talented cast and crew, but their efforts were overshadowed by the film's premise and the execution on that premise. Despite their best intentions, they failed to navigate the complexities of race and identity, leaving behind a film that remains deeply divisive and controversial to this day. Now, I know we've talked about it a lot, but we'll go a little deeper into why Soul Man couldn't be made today when we get back. So let's explore why Soul Man couldn't be made today. First and foremost, the film's premise revolves around a white student, Mark Watson, donning blackface to secure a scholarship that is intended for African American students. This concept, not only deeply offensive, but it also perpetuates harmful racial stereotypes. 
In today's cultural climate, where the increased awareness and sensitivity regarding racial issues is prevalent, such a premise would be met with widespread condemnation and backlash. Also, the portrayal of blackface in Soul Man is inherently racist and insensitive. Blackface has a long and painful history rooted in minstrel shows where white performers would caricature and mock African Americans, reinforcing harmful stereotypes and perpetuating racism. In today's context, any attempt to use blackface in a film would rightly be seen as a highly offensive and unacceptable behavior. The film also trivializes the struggles and discrimination faced by African Americans by reducing them to a mere plot device for comedic effect. It fails to address the systemic racism and inequalities that continue to affect African American communities, instead treating race as a punchline. Furthermore, the lack of diverse representation behind the scenes is glaring. The filmmakers, predominantly white, fail to engage with the complexities of race and privilege in a meaningful way. The decision to greenlight and produce a film centered around blackface reflects a profound lack of understanding and empathy for the experiences of marginalized communities. In today's society, there is growing emphasis on authentic and diverse storytelling that amplifies marginalized voices and challenges existing power structures. Films are increasingly scrutinized for their portrayal of race, gender, and identity, and there is a greater demand for responsible and respectful representation on screen. Given these considerations, Soul Man represents a relic of a bygone era, a reminder of the need for cultural sensitivity and awareness in filmmaking. Its premise and execution are deeply problematic and would be rightfully condemned in today's more enlightened and socially conscious landscape. Now when we get back, we'll dive into some of the trivia for this film and hopefully lighten the mood a little bit. Alright, so let's take a look at some trivia about Soul Man. I know we've talked a lot about the controversy that we see today, but even in 1986, there was considerable controversy due to the racially insensitive premise of the film. So even in its time, the movie was criticized for its use of blackface and trivialization of racial issues. And then in the casting choice of C. Thomas Howell as Mark Watson, he received much backlash for perpetuating stereotypes and engaging in racially insensitive practices. Then there's the academic setting. The film is set against the backdrop of Harvard Law School where Mark attends classes. The prestigious institution serves as the stage for the press, the protagonist's controversial actions and subsequent moral dilemmas. Uh, then there's the critical reception. Despite it, it was a commercial success. It got panned by critics, but commercially, it made a lot of money. Many critics denounced the film for insensitive portrayal of race and its failure to address the complexities of identity and privilege. Uh, but it did make money, so it was a positive for the studios. Soul Man remains a divisive and controversial film today, remembered more for its problematic themes than any entertainment value. Uh, in the 80s, saw a shift in societal attitudes towards race and identity with increased awareness of civil rights issues and legacy of segregation in America. Soul Man reflects the tensions and contradictions of the time, capturing complex of racial issues and a rapidly changing society. And the film also prompted some legal challenges and protests from civil rights organizations who actually called for its boycott and removal from theaters. But as we know, when somebody tries to boycott or remove a film from theaters, that tends to drive the curiosity people out in droves to see those films. So the controversy surrounding Soul Man does, while underscores the need for greater cultural sensitivity, it probably drove up the profits on this film. Uh, so just remember, Soul Man remains a cautionary tale about the dangers of racial insensitivity in filmmaking and the importance of responsible representation on screen. Its legacy serves as a reminder of the ongoing struggle for racial equality and social justice in America. Now with all that, we will take a quick break and when we come back, we'll wrap up with a quick summary and give you our rating of the film.
So to wrap all this up, Soul Man has left us with a profound sense of disappointment and concern. While the film attempted to address important social issues, its approach was deeply flawed and ultimately fairly offensive. The use of blackface and the trivialization of racial identity perpetuates harmful stereotypes and it undermined any potential message the film aimed to convey. As a result, I cannot in good conscience recommend or endorse this film. The rating for Soul Man, I give it a 2 out of 10. I acknowledge its existence and attempt to attack a serious theme, but the film's execution and the portrayal of sensitive subjects just fall way, way short. Now, it's important to recognize the issues with films like Soul Man and understand the harm they can perpetuate. While we may appreciate certain aspects of cinema, it's crucial to engage critically with the content we consume. And I like to open up the dialogue for those sorts of things. Now, as always, we welcome your thoughts and your feedback, so please reach out to us at therealrealtalk at gmail.com. That's therealrealtalk at gmail.com. Or connect with us on Instagram and threads at realrealtalk. In our next episode, we're going to embark on a deep dive into cult classics, exploring what defines a cult film and reviewing some of the most iconic names in cult cinema. Until then, keep watching, keep loving, and keep those reels rolling.